Over 10,000 years ago, the Euphrates River, snaking through Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, was a lifeline. Nowadays, it's facing a big issue. The water levels are dropping like it's going out of style. And that's not all. Those dwindling levels are revealing a whole stash of ancient goodies, unlocking secrets left buried for eons. One mind-blowing find? A cave sitting under the river, recently unearthed by the pros. These caves aren't just any caves, though. They come with an eerie soundtrack that's got folks buzzing. Hang tight while we dive into this epic story, a mix of history, mystery, and maybe even a hint for the generations ahead. So, here's the scoop, at number 15 on our list, we've got these caves blasting out spine-chilling sounds. They're not your run-of-the-mill caves, either. Nope, these babies look more like a set of prison bars leaving everyone scratching their heads. Were they built by ancient hands, or is this Mother Nature's handiwork? Picture this, archaeologists and regular Joes alike have caught some seriously spooky sounds coming from underground. We're talking groans, growls, and the kind of noises that'll give you goosebumps. Some folks swear they've heard chains rattling, adding fuel to the fire. Now, some religious groups reckon this is straight out of biblical predictions. But hold up, does this mean fallen angels are about to rock up and wreck a third of the planet? Cue the shivers. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video. So that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. Next up, we're at number 14, hitting the jackpot with the Tomb of King Gilgamesh. Now, this isn't your average history lesson, it's a tale that's been kicking around for centuries. The Epic of Gilgamesh, a literary masterpiece that was doing the rounds a whopping 2,000 years before Jesus came on the scene. This story? It's all about Gilgamesh, the colossal ruler standing at a staggering 17 feet tall, ruling the roost in ancient Iraq. But wait, there's more. In 2003, a gang of gutsy German explorers stumbled upon what they reckon could be Gilgamesh's final resting place. Hold on to your hat. There were even giant-sized remains that got slapped with some serious scientific testing. Could this really be where the legendary Gilgamesh called it quits? The jury's still out on that one, but it's got everyone buzzing. In the epic, Gilgamesh is painted as a demigod who knew his way around a battlefield but also had a knack for being a bit of a tyrant. Plot twist alert, when the heavens heard the people's pleas. They send a wild card named Enkidu to give Gilgamesh a run for his money. Cue an epic showdown that etched itself into history books. Tragedy struck, though, when Enkidu bit the dust. That's when Gilgamesh's whole deal flipped. He went from conqueror to philosopher on a quest for the meaning of life and a shot at dodging death. For the longest time, Gilgamesh was just a story, more fiction than fact. But then, enter the intrepid Fast Bender and his crew, shaking up the history books by digging up a place that matched the epic's descriptions to a T. And that's not all, folks. At lucky number 13, we're diving into an Islamic prophecy linked to the Euphrates. Many reckon that the river drying up is ticking off boxes in Islamic prophecies. Centuries back, Whispers went around that the mighty Euphrates River, at some point, would lay bare some mind-boggling mysteries. Picture this, a stash of gold, hidden deep within its waters. Now, that's not just a wild guess, it's rooted in ancient predictions, passed down through Islamic teachings, riding on the words given to Prophet Muhammad himself. 
Imagine a mountain of gold popping out from the riverbed. It's not just about the bling, it signifies a huge surge in wealth, an overflow of abundance. It's the kind of stuff that sets imaginations on fire. But hey, before we dive headfirst into daydreams of unimaginable riches, there's a hitch. We've seen this story play out before, finding riches can spark some serious trouble. Histories filled with tales of gold rushes leading to battles, power struggles, and a boatload of unrest. Imagine the chaos if suddenly we struck gold in a big way. It's not just about the cash, it's about the power play, the shaking up of the whole economic scene, the strain on relationships between nations. It's enough to keep you on the edge of your seat. Now, here's where it gets even juicier. Biblical prophecies, like the Book of Revelation, throw their own twist into the mix. According to these texts, there's a part where the Euphrates gets hit with a cosmic drought, setting the stage for some big players from the East to make an entrance. And guess what? Recent happenings seem to align with this prophecy, with the river drying up faster than ever. But hold on to your hat, here comes the real kicker. These prophecies aren't all sunshine and rainbows. They talk about four angels making a grand entrance from the dried up riverbed, and they're not bringing cake and balloons. Nope, they're here for some serious business talking about wiping out a third of the world's population during an apocalypse. It's the kind of stuff that'll make you sit up straight and pay attention. Now, you might think, hey, these prophecies sound like Sunday school lessons, but wait a minute. People hanging around the Euphrates have reported some weird occurrences, sparking debates about what these biblical texts might actually mean. Whether you're on board with these prophecies or not, the Euphrates River and the treasures hiding beneath its surface have a magnetic pull that weaves into the beliefs of millions around the globe. Let's switch gears and talk about these incredible discoveries, figurines, ancient inscriptions, religious artifacts, unearthed from the caves nearby. These findings aren't just trinkets, they're like windows into the beliefs, myths, and rituals of the ancient folks who once lived around there. For these ancient peeps, the Euphrates was more than just a river, it was sacred, representing life, fertility, and spiritual power. Imagine them seeing these flowing waters as divine forces, cosmic energy wrapped up in liquid form. It's the stuff legends are made of, with these rivers nurturing their land their crops, and their spirits. Now, these caves? They were like doorways to the divine, brimming with spiritual energy, a direct hotline to the supernatural world. Ancient ceremonies, rituals, prayers, they all danced around these caves, seeking guidance, healing, or that extra cosmic oomph. The writings, symbols, and art on those cave walls, they're keys to unlocking the beliefs, ceremonies, and myths tied to the Euphrates. Maybe these caves were pilgrimage spots or a hub for ceremonies, where folks sought out spiritual intervention using the river's magic. So, you see, it's not just about a river or a pile of gold. It's about history, prophecy, and a connection that bridges ancient times with our curious present. Deep within the chambers of this cave, something magical might have happened. You've got echoes bouncing around, the darkness lending an air of mystery, and the acoustics creating an experience straight out of a ritualistic handbook. Just like how Hindus see the Ganga River as sacred, the folks around the Euphrates probably held it in a similar high regard. Now, let's talk ancient cities. The ones lining the Euphrates have coughed up relics from so many different eras, Sumerian, Assyrian, Greek, Byzantine, Islamic, basically, a treasure trove of history. But guess what? 
There's a new kid on the block. This mighty river, which once ruled the scene, decided to pull a surprise. Picture this, Iraq facing its worst drought in ages. The towns were gasping for water. And just when things looked bleak, Tata. A hidden marvel came to light, buried under the once mighty flow of the Euphrates. Here's the scoop, Kurdish authorities, trying to save their wilting crops, decided to drain a chunk of the Mosul Dam Reservoir. Little did they know they were about to hit the jackpot. Archaeologists glimpsed a submerged city during a drought back in 2018, but this time, they were on a mission. What they found? Mind-blowing. This city, once part of the Madani Empire, had its glory days between 1500 and 3500 years before Jesus joined the party. It was a major player, rubbing shoulders with Egypt and all. But, plot twist, the Assyrians took them down, and the city was left high and dry. This revelation peeks into the ancient world, their ties, and rivalries. And when the Mosul Reservoir began filling up again, they covered and protected this historical gem, leaving a box of mysteries for the future gang to explore. Let's pull the curtains on the truth behind the Euphrates drying up. It's been a hot topic for centuries, showing us the wild complexities of managing water and the fate of civilizations. Babylon, for instance, knew the Euphrates was its ticket to prosperity, so they turned it into a water highway after a handy treaty. But, ah, the drama. When it came to sharing water, things got tense. Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, each building dams to secure their own water supply, ended up creating a lopsided flow downstream. Imagine the once mighty river reduced to a trickle, leaving places like Iraq parched while the folks upstream enjoyed the perks of hydroelectric power and economic growth. Tensions soared to new heights with Iraq even threatening to tear down Syria's dam in a desperate thirst for more water. Cue the diplomatic superheroes. Saudi Arabia and the Soviet Union stepped in to save the day. Crisis averted, but the water wars weren't done yet. Everyone wanted more, forgetting that water's not an unlimited resource. And guess what? The consequences were brutal. That mighty river? It's shriveling up. The region's gripped by drought, crops are wilting, and folks are struggling just to wet their whistle. The Syrian conflict added to the woes, leaving 9 million Syrians in dire need. It's a cautionary tale, a reminder that we've got to treat our resources with care and plan for the long haul. Living near the Euphrates River ain't all sunshine and rainbows for the locals. They're facing a real crisis cause there ain't a better alternative in sight. This river, once their lifeline, turned into a struggle, making life downright tough. Okay, let's talk about this ancient cave in Zaku. Picture this, researchers eyeing a newly found sunken city and wondering, could this be the long lost Zaku? This place was huge, a 600-mile stretch from the Zagros Mountains to the Mediterranean Sea. It was the big deal back in the Madani Empire days, but then things got hairy with the Egyptians and later the Assyrians, and poof, Zaku disappeared, drowned by the sea. But guess what? It's back popping up alongside a captivating cave that's got archaeologists and history buffs buzzing. Now, let's dive into the day-to-day -day of Zaka's ancient folks. Archaeologists are like detectives here, carefully examining every little artifact and structure in this city. Each find? It's like unlocking a new chapter of their history book, giving us a peek into their lives, social setups, and how they handled business. Even the tiniest things, 
like pottery or tools, spill the beans on their technology and daily grind. But this cave? It's not just about the artifacts. It's practically neighbors with the Euphrates River, showing just how tied up the ancient folks were with their lifeline. The Euphrates wasn't just a river, it was their juice, their water source for farming. With this river's help, they turn the place into a farming paradise. And hey, those ceramic vessels with ancient writings? They're like time capsules, showing us what went down in the daily lives of our ancient crew. Some of those tablets even carry seals, like one from Gimelneric, a big shop from nearby Tucka. It's like a VIP pass showing his sway in a community, giving historians a lot to dig into. As the water levels dipped, six tunnels popped up, straight out of history. These bad boys were hiding under the Euphrates for who knows how long. And man, they're a marvel. Historians are tripping over the flawless designs and well-thought-out stairs. But hey, some folks, leaning towards Christian prophecies, think these tunnels lead to where angels are supposedly locked up. Most experts ain't buying it though. They're thinking these tunnels were the OG highways connecting Babylon and Mesopotamia, a real deal from back in the day. These tunnels aren't just tunnels, they're a treasure trove of history waiting to be explored. Their walls? Decked out with intricate craftsmanship that takes you on a journey through a forgotten civilization. And here's the kicker. Some stories tie these tunnels to the legendary Queen Ceramis, bringing ancient tales to life. It's like history's hitting play on stories we only read about in ancient texts. As we drift back through time, our minds latch onto ancient mysteries unfurling as the Euphrates River reveals its secrets. But hey, let's hit today's topic. We've chatted about caves, tunnels, and those spooky sounds echoing out of nowhere. Now, get this, a cave under the Euphrates got sealed up cause they stumbled upon something wild, a creature straight out of a sci-fi flick. Picture this, part fish, part reptile, or maybe a mix of both, with a mouth that could swallow a human whole. It's got folks wondering if this beast is the source of those spine-tingling sounds. Or who knows? Maybe there's more lurking in those shadows, waiting to make an appearance. What do you reckon? Next up, let's talk scripts, languages, and paintings. Scientists have dug up inscriptions and art inside those sacred caves. It's like uncovering the code to history. As historians decipher these writings and admire the stunning artwork, it's like taking a time machine back in time. You feel connected to your ancestors, like you're peeking into their thoughts and lives. These findings aren't just pieces of the puzzle, they're the backbone of future research. Those inscriptions spill the beans on everything from how the city was run to its economic setup. Dive deeper, and you get a peek into their daily grind, their gigs, and their social scenes. But wait, there's more. Among these writings, you find religious texts and songs, giving us a front row seat to their spiritual gigs and the whole deity scene. These caves are like treasure troves of Zaka's cultural vibes. You've got engravings, sculptures, and artwork that bring their everyday hustle, their myths, and their history to life. It's like stepping into a time machine and getting a front row seat to their cultural traditions. And guess what? Studying these artifacts and paintings helps us decode their style, their symbols, and the tricks they use to make these masterpieces. It's like learning the ancient art of storytelling and history telling through visuals. Exploring this cave isn't just about a city's past. It's about unlocking the bigger stories, conflicts, wars, and the events that shaped history. 
It's like lifting a veil off history itself, getting a peek into the lives of folks from way back. Now, let's talk about the Fertile Crescent. It's like the birthplace of civilizations, a special chapter in history books. Think about this vast open land smack between two powerful rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. That's Mesopotamia, meaning land between the rivers, part of the larger Fertile Crescent from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean Sea. It's the place where the first farming crews started at all, laying the groundwork for those grand civilizations down the line. For the locals back then, these rivers were a godsend. Every year, these rivers flooded, leaving a thick, nutrient-packed soil called silt that covered the land, making it super fertile for farming. But hey, those floods weren't all sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes they'd go overboard and wipe out whole villages. And don't even get started on the scorching droughts hitting the desert beyond the rivers that left everything dried up. Despite these hurdles, the Sumerians, who rolled into Mesopotamia ages ago, didn't let that stop them. They were a resourceful bunch, turning this land into prime farmland. First off, they nailed this massive irrigation system with miles of canals, bringing river water to their fields, even when summer turned everything into a desert. Then came the game changer, the plow. It made planting seeds a breeze, and suddenly, they were churning out food like there was no tomorrow. That surplus led to more folks popping up, and before you knew it, villages turned into booming towns. Fast forward 3,000 years before Jesus was born, and voila, you got the first cities in town. Uruk was the real VIP here, hosting about 40,000 peeps. These cities were hustling trade hubs, but they had a bit of a struggle, wood, stone, and metals were scarce. But these Sumerian traders were no slouches. They hit the road with wheel carts and ships, striking deals in far-off lands, trading grain and wool for stuff they needed. That trade game made these cities rich and powerful, ultimately birthing the world's first civilizations. Mesopotamia's rep as the birthplace of civilizations? Legendary. The drying Euphrates rivers giving us solid clues about the Fertile Crescent story. The Babylonians, who relied on the Euphrates for everything from water to life itself, left behind a treasure trove of goodies, houses, pots, and those unique clay tablets. Even with the droughts, new archaeological gems are popping up. They found ancient buildings in this massive industrial zone, surrounded by epic walls and towers, all made of good old mud, over 3,000 years old. It's like they've been frozen in time, almost. And then, bam! Unearthing these clay tablets, some still in their clay wrappers, is mind-blowing. They're like time capsules, giving us the lowdown on Babylonian life. But you know what? Progress had a price tag. The Euphrates Dam in 68 brought change, but also submerged ancient spots. Those riverbanks, though, kept a few secrets, like sunken cemeteries that peek into ancient life. Now, the western district of Raqqa is making heads turn. Once underwater, it's a hot spot for historians and archaeologists digging up more clues. The Euphrates River's been a big deal, splitting east from west and shaping history. And get this. Traces of early Homo erectus, our ancient kin, were found around modern-day Turkey. Think fragments of a skull, around 1.1 million years old. These finds give us a peek into the distant past and how our ancestors, the Homo erectus crew, handled things way back then. Walking upright, controlling fire, these folks were something else. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more history digs coming your way soon.
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.